certainly more research is always needed. And what we really need to do is expand our research um, populations so that we have a larger proportion of individuals from these highly disadvantaged contexts who are included in our research studies. Right now, when we look at research studies across the country and research studies well beyond the field of Alzheimer's disease or brain health, what we find is that they are disproportionately um, including individuals from very wealthy contexts. So you have a lot more individuals coming from uh, advantaged or highly wealthy neighborhoods than you do for individuals coming from highly disadvantaged neighborhoods. And so because of this, a lot of the research that moves forward does not properly um, uh, include uh, population-based characteristics along these social contextual measures that are of great importance. So that's one step that we need. But another step that we need is to bring our scientific community together and think about this, the way that some of these social science approaches can be combined with our basic science approaches in order to understand more about the basic and fundamental physiological drivers of health disparities. So we have spent a lot of time as a community describing the differences that one population has a health outcome that's here and another population that has a health outcome that's here. But what exactly is the physiological mechanism underneath that? And how can we then intervene on that? Can we intervene through social policy? Can we intervene through precision medicine techniques or some sort of modified clinical intervention? But ultimately, we need an answer to health disparities. We need to mitigate these problems and not just describe them. So everything that we do on our team and everything that I would encourage the field to do should be aligned towards action so that we can realize real world solutions, be they new therapies, new clinical interventions, or new social policies.